let me just start by sort of saying this is probably the most important and uh, relevant uh, topic of this whole summit. Uh, the next generation of cybersecurity leaders. So we've got an all-star cast here. I'm going to quickly go around. We've only got an hour and we've got uh, five people um, uh, as panelists. So we don't have that much time to discuss things. We've got a few opening questions, which we can get, get things starting. But we're also asking for you to submit questions as well, which we'll uh, put to the uh, panelists. Um, very, very quickly, I'm going to each, uh, introduce each of them. Uh, Luan Harvey, and you're there, I can see. With your bicycle in the background. Uh, Luan is the Chair of Digital Forensic Science and Cybersecurity at Eastwood Academy High School at uh, HISD. We've got Kimberly Hubbard, who is the Instructional Dean of IT and Visual Communication at Lone Star College, Westway Park Technology Center. Hi there, Kim. Then we have uh, Stan Napper, who is the Founding Dean of Engineering at Houston Baptist uh, University. And then we have Tom Wynn, Master of, Master of Security Management Program Director at the University of Houston downtown. Uh, I'm still hoping that Sean Ockmishy uh, from Houston Community College will be uh, logging in as well. But I'm going to start off with, which is, um, what programs do you guys offer to prepare students for a career in cybersecurity? Why don't I kick off with Luann? Okay. Uh, so this year we started with uh, cyber security capstone for those students who took in cyber security last year. And we're doing digital forensics as well. And the lead in for sophomores will be networking. Okay, thank you, uh, Luann. Kimberly? So Lone Star College uh, has a very well uh, vetted program. Actually, we have two programs. We do have an AAS program in cybersecurity, which is a two year program. Um, we are building a level two certificate, which would be a one year uh, training under the AAS degree and would fully transfer into the AAS degree, which is of course a, a two year program. And we also have um, starting this semester, this fall semester, uh, we do have a Bachelor's of Applied Technology degree for cybersecurity. We also, this semester, started a dual credit program with Aldean ISD, uh, where their students are going to be starting off with the Cisco program, which is part of our AAS in cybersecurity. And once they finish that program, they will be able to transfer into the AES degree. And of course, again, after they finish the 60 credit hours in the AES degree, uh, they will be able to fully transfer into the bachelor's degree. So we have an extremely uh, detailed set of programs that will prepare an individual that has no experience all the way through to the bachelor's level. Um, the program can also cater to those individuals that are coming from industry and do have some experience as well. So uh, the way we've built our programs, we can actually train individuals from ground zero to individuals with three to five years of experience. Once they finish with the Bachelor of Technology, uh, we also have programs in our corporate college entity, which will give them additional training uh, for some of the more uh, some, of, some of the higher level industry certifications, such as the CISSP. So it's a well-rounded program that allows individuals to get all of the experience they need uh, to become cybersecurity specialists. Okay, thank you very much. By the way, Luann, I'm going to come back to you after we spoke to the other two because your microphone wasn't working too well. So perhaps we can go through your, your bit again. Uh, Stan? Hello. Uh, so I'm at Houston Baptist University where... We started uh, just a few years ago uh, a new uh, engineering college. We're offering three degrees, electrical engineering and computer science. But the degree that most relates to cybersecurity, we call cyber engineering. Uh, cyber engineering is kind of a new uh, uh, new degree, and it, and it doesn't cover all of cybersecurity, but it covers uh, the ability to design secure systems at the interface of operational technology and information technology. So we describe it as somewhere between devices and data, somewhere between hardware and software, 
uh, somewhere between electrical engineering and computer science. And so we share some labs and resources among those uh, three degree programs. And what I found in uh, Houston when I moved here three years ago is among the uh, uh, network of industry partners that we built is there, there's a real need for uh, people that bo understand both OT and IT and can do some design work as well as some uh, uh, after build cybersecurity kind of work. So that, that's our approach. We're using cybersecurity as a strength in both the electrical engineering and computer science programs, even though those are more traditional. And when we get our, our first graduates in another year, we will apply for accreditation through uh, ABET, which is the organization that accredits engineering programs. Uh, that's that's where we're headed. We are following the, the NICE framework and mapping our degree programs into certain parts of the NICE framework. And uh, our hope is that we're producing graduates that can work for energy, healthcare, and lots of other uh, uh, systems and companies and facilities, and especially in the Houston metro area. That's kind of where we where we are, where we're headed. Well, I'm, I'm Tom Wynn. I'm now an adjunct faculty member at the University of Downtown. I've recently left, um, but the, I, I ran the Master of Security Management program at UH Downtown for a little over six years. And uh, specific to the MSM, there is a, a, a Master of Security Management, which is a combination of cybersecurity classes and management classes. And uh, what we focus on is managing risk in a large organization. And um, then we also have the the cybersecurity classes combined with one of the core classes from the degree can be taken as a standalone cybersecurity certificate graduate certificate. So if someone doesn't want a master's degree but doesn't have the background in cybersecurity, maybe a related background or almost no background in cybersecurity, but in the security profession, and know they need to learn about cybersecurity that was what this program was designed to do um, one of the one of the unique features of this program compared to the other ones that you're going to hear about is how we we focus on managing in a business and we focus on managing risk in a business and when the the courses that i typically teach are in the core and um so like, like the, one of the courses called enterprise security management one of the things that i've force my students to do is whether they're coming from what we call the enterprise side, which is the more traditional security, or they're coming from the cybersecurity side, I force them to think about managing the other team. So one of the one of the things that's happening in the security world right now is security directors are it used to be a, lar a large number of the organizations had two. You had a security director that was a cybersecurity director and you had a security director that was the more the traditional side. Well, that's starting to go away, especially when money gets tight. Companies are saying, well, why can't I just have one? And so they're having to manage sort of both sides of the house, if you will. And um, my, my students will tell you that I drive them crazy, but I, I make them learn a little bit about the other person's swimming pool, if you will. So when they're managing this risk, they, they understand a little bit of both sides of the house. And that's, that's a pretty important thing, in my opinion, that we, we understand not just, not just executive protection and not just access control and not just cybersecurity and not just IT and OT, but everything that you need to understand about risk to the organization. And that's what we focus on. Anyway, thank you very much for that. I'm sorry, my, my internet dropped out in my uh, high-tech uh, house right now when I came back. Well, back Thank you, uh, Tom, for stepping in, whoever <laughs> controlled that. Luann, we had uh, a bit of a trouble when, when, when you spoke, first of all, with your microphone. Do you want to say a few words again and see, see if you can yeah, come over better? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So when Tom was talking about uh, learning every uh, part of someone else's job, um, in the industry we call that cross-training. And it's an excellent idea because then you also know what the other person is going through. And so when you're working as a team, uh, you have empathy with each other. And you can understand and sometimes you can crop up with ideas uh, because you've experienced it. So I like that a lot. Uh, in our program, Remember, they're starting out as uh, they haven't. This will be the first year that they're starting out with networking in sophomore year. 
Uh, but I think that our students now are growing up with computers that are completely locked down until they get to college. And I don't think that's a good thing. So we've enabled uh, cloud labs simulations so that they will be able to get to a control panel and understand how to set up a firewall uh, and, and do some access control, do user uh, and folder uh, security implementation. And so this way they feel they're in more control. And it's kind of like um, at, this, at this age, they're more likely to take risks with computers, which can be a good thing, but it also scares adults, right? Uh, but we have to get them ready for college and locking them down completely and not allowing them to ever see a command line or a control panel, uh, I think has been detrimental. So I think that online simulations have been changing that, thank God, because they don't have to worry about the kids accessing things that they have no right to. Uh, but at the same time, uh, they're able to simulate the environment of a work environment and a cybersecurity environment. And then that's what we're trying to do. Um, we have uh, certifications. They start out as foundational. So we have the most uh, Microsoft Technology Associate certifications in security in the region. And we want to, we're not trying to make the record. We're just trying to make sure that the kids have some foundational security certifications uh, when they interview for college. And also that proves their commitment to uh, that type of work or that career. So it's working okay. very, very well in the okay. program. Okay, Luan, you're, you're watching out for questions coming in from the audience. I've still got a few more questions about myself. Um, what are your plans for expanding cybersecurity programs in the next three to five years to meet industry needs? I'll just quickly start off by saying at the University of Boston, we have a master's degree in cybersecurity. And our enrollments this last fall, I two months ago, have almost doubled. And we're also looking at undergraduate certificate level programs going on now with the sort of needs of uh, industry and commerce. So as uh, we uh, just left Luan, I'll come to Luan last on this question. So I'll dive straight in and ask Kelly if she could respond to that question about what are your plans for exp expanding cybersecurity programs to meet industry needs? Sure. Um, what what we what we try to do at Lone Star is make sure our students have um, a plethora of experience in other areas, not just the specific area that they are that they are training in. One of the things that we consistently do, we meet with our industry industry partners twice a year, and um, what we consistently hear is. It's it's great to have someone come in with the with the area of focus, but it's really valuable to have someone come in with um, knowledge of, of of other areas. And I think someone mentioned that before. Our enterprise networking program really ties all of networking in together with the traditional security as well as cybersecurity. And we have been working over the last four to five years to consistently update our our programs, upgrade our programs, and make it scalable going forward so that we can meet industry demand. Um, as I stated earlier, what the, the first step in expansion was expanding to a Bachelor's of Applied Technology, which is a lot different from many of the Bachelor's in Cybersecurity programs out there. One of the biggest differences for our program is it is a technical-based program. Most often when you find a Bachelor's degree in Cybersecurity, uh, you get some technical, but it's more geared towards the management side, uh, and that's great. We do need individuals with that knowledge. We listened to our industry uh, panel, and 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 we really made a concerted effort to give more technical expertise to our students so that they have the technical side plus a little bit of the management. So uh, the first step of expansion was expanding to the Bachelors of Applied Technology, we do have full hands-on labs for our students. Of course, COVID has put a little bit of a damper on that so that we are doing a lot of simulations this semester, but we have fully integrated cybersecurity labs that are locked down. They are siloed from our production network so that the students can get in there and break whatever they need to break. They can, they can hack, they can penetration test, they can do whatever they need to. All the data is data that is fabricated by faculty, so we do not work with live data. Uh, and that makes it a safe environment for our students to be able to learn all of the skill sets they need. 
the second level of expansion that we are looking at, um, again, this is all grouped with our uh, enterprise networking program, which is part, which is also part with the part with the cybersecurity area. Um, we are building an additional um, operations center for the students to get a lot more hands-on experience in a real-world environment. So the expansion of our program for the next three to five years will be to ensure that the environments that the students are learning in are locked down environments so that they can do any and everything they need to do to learn the specialized skill sets they need in cyber, but also to expand it so that they're getting that real world experience in an environment that mimics the, the, the work environment or, or the workplace that they'll be working in. Um, one of the consistent messages that we always have from industry is, it is very difficult for them to hire graduates because graduates don't have enough experience and it is sometimes a liability. So one of the things that we're working on again to, to really kind of meet that, uh, that challenge is building more of the specialized um, uh, lab simulation, lab, real lab, not simulation, but real live, real live lab environment so that the students can get that hands on experience. So that's what we're looking at for the expansion of our programs for the next three to five years. We'll also be working with the industry uh, partners that we meet twice a year to make sure that, of course, we know everything changes at least every two to three years. We want to make sure our equipment is updated. We want to make sure the programs are updated. The curriculum is updated. Uh, and we try very, very hard to make sure that once things change in industry, they also change at Lone Star so that the student is always sure to get the most up-to-date training possible so that those skill sets transfer directly into uh, a work environment. Mm -hmm. Sonia, I think you might be muted. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was muted. I was a good boy. All right, now I'm muted. Thank you, Kim. Uh, Stan, can you uh, join into this bit? Yes. So I think the question is about the next three to five years and uh, cybersecurity programs. Here's some things that we have on the horizon at uh, Houston Baptist University. So we're uh, working with um, a cyber range provider uh, to be able to, of course, educate our own students, but uh, also to develop some continuing education programs. So I think we're going to see uh, certificates and uh, other forms, maybe even smaller than certificates coming out of the, uh, what we're going to do with the cyber range. And then we are adding another degree program that is cyber related. So the three programs that I mentioned uh, to you before, uh, two of which are engineering, one are computer science, are, uh, they have a theoretical component, they have a mathematical component, and uh, we, we're finding students that have an interest in these career paths that don't have the preparation for that aspect of the engineering and computer science degree program. So this uh, new degree will be an information systems degree. It will have a number of uh, business-related courses. In, in fact, we built into that degree program enough courses to satisfy the minor in, in business administration our business college uh, already has a couple of uh, information management uh, courses. And then we're gonna take some of our programming classes and build some new courses in IT infrastructure. And, uh, and cybersecurity is still gonna be a feature in multiple courses throughout this degree, even though it's an information systems degree. And that's about as far as I've been able to see uh, down the road, uh, some, some continuing education certificate programs and this new degree that is uh, less theoretical and more applied. Okay, thanks, uh, Tom. One of the biggest things that, that the MSM, and it's a tradition in the degree, um, about a little over, right around half of the faculty are are practicing industry professionals that are adjuncts, and then and um, we have, I think, now. It's either three or four CISSPs that are teaching the the cybersecurity courses, um, and and what one of the things that I've always encouraged students to do is is to make sure that you're asking those instructors that have those certifications as as these students are you know they're they're a lot of them 
might have one or two and they're working their way toward that CISSP or, or whatever. And, um, and I, and I always tell them, I said, make sure you're weaving in, into, into the discussion, those questions about those certifications. And, and that's just one piece of that puzzle. The other piece of that puzzle is that these adjuncts, because they're practicing cybersecurity professionals, they're bringing that in with them every day so they can talk about what they're doing now um in the classroom and that 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 like i said that's been a tradition in the msm it's it's an important part of when 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 we're talking when students are working on their network for their next job when they're interviewing when they're writing resumes I mean, these are industry professionals that are living it working it every day and um the the other piece of the puzzle because we have that those adjunct faculty members that are attached to the program and they're very active in the program um, they're driving the curriculum. So when we're, when we, when there's meetings about our, 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 our curriculum and what we're teaching and then actually doing the curriculum review that in our, in our learning outcomes, getting, getting all, if I get all inside baseball about education here for a minute, when we're talking about those, the courses and learning outcomes and how we're achieving those learning outcomes, that faculty is can can speak to the university staff members and faculty members about what what applications we need to be talking about what what is actually happening in the certification world and then and and those two things put together and i think another piece of this puzzle that's really critical for students to hear if there's students listening right now is um an oft overlooked thing for students to do when they're working on on assignments is 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 to reach out to the different for the different people that they work with and as a resource for for a, an assignment something is you know it's simple that we you're doing the research that's great and the research is important but the reality is as fast as cybersecurity is moving right now the people who are elbows deep into those systems know as much about it as anybody and so one of the things that, that I've always encouraged my students to do, and um, one thing I think we should all be doing, hopefully we are, is when when students are, are you know, how do I get this information? How do I, well, go talk to the director of cybersecurity in your business. Where do you work? And it does two things. It, um, it, it for them, it exposes them to the people that are, like I said, they're working in it every day. But the other thing, there's a reason these people are working toward these degrees and, and to get a job. And, and I can't tell you how many of our students have come back to me and said, well, I interviewed our chief, our chief security officer, and he asked me or she asked me why I was why I was interviewing. And I told him it's for this class that I'm taking. And the next question was, what class are you taking? And, it was, you know, data protection and, and, and cybersecurity, whatever the class was. And they said, why are you taking that class? Well, I'm, I'm trying to get into the cybersecurity business. Well, oh, I didn't know that about you. Well, tell me more about what you want to do. So it, it, it spills into this whole discussion about their future expands their network, which is, you know, the two most important things that they were going to school for probably. And so it, when you put all those together, you know, you're, you're, you're getting people involved in the program that are in industry. You've got the, the program the other way around getting involved with those people that are in industry. And that's, that's a critical piece for our program and with, with the, the advisory panels and advisory boards and, and this, the cyber summit, you know, the Houston cyber summit, that, that's where this happens. So I know it's not just us, but it's, it, that's one of the critical pieces for us. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Now, Luann, I know that you're in a very different position talking about a, a high school, but where do many of your, do many of your students go on to do any, anything associated with cybersecurity? Oh, yeah. Uh, and I, I think that Eastwood has, has, has had the only uh, high school cybersecurity program for this year. So we've done very well. But what, what our students, and because they're high school students, uh, they can't be underestimated either. Uh, we've had students do internships at U of H, HCC, uh, the Federal Reserve. As a matter of fact, the Federal Reserve still has uh, one of our students, and another one of our students was hired uh, after her internship by the Dallas Federal Reserve. Uh, so we have students out there, um, 
And, you know, every year we have a career fair and we hope that businesses come in and talk to them. They're very, very bright. They're very, very dedicated. And, uh, and they know what they're doing. Um, but the, the, the thing that I really liked hearing the colleges talk about was uh, not so much, uh, you know, a one-way track. So you have many options that they can take. I was talking to one of my students today and she's terrified of math and she was like, I, I really want a cybersecurity career and digital forensics, but I, I'm terrified of calculus. So, you know, I was telling you, well, as you start out, uh, you know, it's not uh, the same computer science uh, degree. You don't have to go for a pure computer science degree. You can go for information technology. You can go for, there's so many areas of computer information security that they can now tackle without having that fear of calculus and math and coding. Uh, so I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that Lone Star, I have three schools going to Lone Star right now. I have uh, also a few going to U of H, and I think I have two going to Baptist. So they're all over the place. Um, but I really like the programs that we offer in Houston, and it and it gives me an opportunity to say, have you seen this program? Have you seen that program? So I'm happy to hear that. But don't underestimate. That's the only thing I say. Don't underestimate high school students, especially the ones from Eastwood Academy, because they're dedicated. They give a hundred percent, and they have technical ability. Already, as a fact, I had two of my students that uh, uh, went to the city of Houston as interns, and they actually taught some of those people who had already worked there a few things. Because technology is always changing, and young people grab onto it faster than we can. And so, of course, uh, they don't have to go to school for every single thing, new thing they learn. They just they read it, they hear about it from somebody else, they pick it up, and they're gone with it. So I'm very excited to, to see this because uh, a few years ago, there may be only one or two programs I could send them to. Okay, thank you, uh, Lou. I was gonna say quickly, before going on to another question, that um, you know, we, we, we've done a number of people doing our master's degree. Uh, we're also making sure that the uh, cybersecurity stuff is becoming an element in almost all of our programs because a fundamental part of it needs to be known by absolutely everybody. We're also talking with the uh, Bauer College of Business to introduce a stream on cybersecurity in the MBA program and also in our own uh, marketing problem uh, programs as well. Uh, one of the interesting things I saw with uh, one of our undergraduate programs was that uh, one of our cybersecurity people uh, actually takes groups of students out to do a, a security analysis for nonprofits. And you're going to roll your eyes when I tell you this one, when they went to this one non-profit and found out they were getting their Wi-Fi from the law firm in the same building, just one floor above. And when our cyber person looked into it, they could actually see all the law firm's files. So they quickly ran upstairs and announced this to them. And I think, you know, expletive deleted uh, uh, came back. Uh, from this, uh, but clearly there's, there's plenty more that we could be doing. I'm noticing some questions coming in. Uh, Michael Krogstadt, I think we've begun to touch on it, but let's go back to it. From that experience, uh, have you considered partnering with companies in the Houston area to do internships uh, and talking with CSOs and directors in the area, there would be an opportunity for that, which also uh, expands to a slightly wider question, which is um, what is the employability of your students? Are they all fully employed by the time they graduate uh, on that. I'm gonna start this time with Stan. Tony, did you want me to respond to Michael's question? Is that yes. what you're asking? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Good about partnerships. And so uh, that's absolutely uh, a, a great question. What we've uh, decided to do at HBU in these bachelor's degree programs is that every student is required to have an internship before they graduate which imposes a lot of uh, work on us on the front end. And we have built a network of industry partners that has about 75 members on it. Uh, so that, uh, and, and one of the main things we're asking them to do for us is to provide those internships. And we're describing an internship in more than one way. There's a typical way where you would spend your summer in uh, an organization and be assigned some tasks related to your degree program. But also that could be something that happens uh, during the academic year. Uh, after hours or like a part-time job. And I'm really uh, imagining that uh, 
uh, most of these students will have more than one internship experience before they graduate. Also, uh, in, in engineering and computer science, the students are required to do senior level projects. These will be year long projects. We're going to turn to our industry advisory board to uh, uh, to help us identify problems to work on. And so these will be uh, industry uh, suggested, industry sponsored, uh, industry cited, because there's no reason why our students couldn't go to the site to work with the individuals in the company. And of course, we hope there will be industry standard so that the solution that our, our students put together in their senior year would be something that uh, actually does solve a problem and, and makes a benefit that we can measure and see type of uh, revenue generated or cost savings. We're going to monitor that all the way. Uh, so that's what we're doing. It, it is an important question. It's an important goal for all the academic programs. That's how we're approaching it. Okay, thank you. By the way, there's an awful lot of feedback. So if you're not speaking, can you make sure that you're on mute? And now I'm going to go straight over to, uh, to Tom. Well, it's going to be kind of a letdown answer. Um, we we <laughs> the the challenge that we've had at UHD, and 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 I would imagine that that um, that some of the rest of you can relate to this to, to some degree. Um, UHD is in, in the MSM has has traditionally been um, students that are already working, they have a full time job, and um, I was I I've had internships offered to my to me to give to students. And I've had no students that could be takers because they were putting food on the table already. Um, so it's it's it, it I don't, it's not unique to, to UHD, but it certainly is is where we are in the student body that we serve. I like I imagine that, that Kim, you've, you've experienced that at ACC a little bit. Um, but I, the 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 one time that I did have a student ask about an internship, I had a hard time finding one. So. Um, it, and, and again, I wasn't living in that world because they, that I had to turn so many down. But that's that, you know, hopefully people will keep looking for, for students. That's about all I can say. OK, thank you, sir, uh, for that, Tommy. Yeah, I think we discussed that something like that last last year. I think this should be a wider topic for us to to finish off with before we we, we end today. And maybe there's something that we can do as a group and also working by the, the, the summit group to, to, uh, to look for more internships and job opportunities in this field uh, to support what you and we are all uh, doing. So I guess I need to come back to uh, Luan again. Do Luan, do you have anything to say in this regard? As far as um, uh, internships, can you hear me? Right. I guess it. Yes, it's it's far more uh, uh, awkward in your particular case. But I didn't know if you had any particular input. Do you get any sort of um, uh, cyber experiences going through for your students? Oh yeah. Um, thank God for Blue Lands, uh, Federal Reserve, um, even the colleges. We we have placed a lot of uh, students for internships, and they're paid internships. Uh, but uh, but we've had a lot of support from businesses and and they've come to the school and and, and really have undergirded us and that has uh, the students it gives them a lot of confidence they come in they talk with them uh, they talk to them about how to do a resume how to dress how to uh, you know how to talk to a person uh, that's interviewing them um, you know things like that and so it really helps and they do. We're very successful on internships. Okay, thank you, Kim. So, of course, being in in the uh, <clears throat> higher education area, uh, such as, as as my peers here, we do face some of the same challenges, Tom, as as you do in terms of a lot of our students. Most of our students, as a matter of fact, actually have full time jobs. Um, our classes are mostly in the evening. Uh, because of that. And so we do run against that challenge of having individuals that are actually available. But the other challenge we have is because our program is so highly technical, we we sometimes have a very difficult time finding companies that are willing to give our students an opportunity to work in their organization as an intern. And, and as I said before, that's mainly because of 
the, the security of their data. You can kind of imagine being the, the CEO, CIO, CISO, you know, of, of, an, of, an, or, of an organization and having a student that is still learning in a program actually working with their data. So internships that we actually work with and have partnerships with are more on the networking side. We're still trying to break into the cybersecurity technical side for internships. And we're always looking for industry partners. Uh, we do have some partners that are looking forward to these new labs that we're building because it will give those students that, that, that knowledge uh, that they'll need for getting into live data work. Um, so we do have a very few, but we are always looking for internships. So if there are individuals out there that are willing to uh, intern with students that are going through a program or even students that just finished the program, we definitely are looking for those, those partnerships. Okay, thank you. And there's a couple of questions coming up directed at, uh, uh, at me. That, yeah, so cybersecurity is becoming a part of all of our programs in the uh, College of Technology at UH. And uh, someone also asked, is the College of Technology NSA Center of Academic Excellence? And yes, it is. And in actual fact, the Computer Science Department in the Natural Sciences and Mathematics College at UH is a natural sci um, an NSA Center of Research Excellence as well. So we've got quite a broad uh, spectrum. And I know that other organizations, um, any of the partners on the call, um, in actual fact, also have an NSA center of excellence uh, situation. Um, also, I just see this one coming up uh, on the screen, more partnerships, whoa, leave it up there. Uh, more partnerships on the networking side than in cybersecurity because all the hesitancy on the part of companies to give access to students to their data. Um, I'm presuming that's more of a statement. In our particular case at UH, I don't think we have that pro same problem. Um, I mean, we're working with NSA on stuff, so you know we deal with the security of data, uh, et cetera. So that's part of what we do, obviously, in this domain as well. Uh, if students need some sort of form of security clearance, that adds an extra level of whatever, which is difficult to go through until they get employed. Uh, although, I don't know what about the rest of you on the panel. We're actually seriously looking at uh, having a process where uh, we're going to do some more work with companies that um, at NSA that require security clearances. So that will be an extra uh, tick on their resume for getting jobs. Um, as it is, it, I think in terms of employability, we probably get more than 90% of our students um, uh, graduate with a job. Uh, they've either done our degree part time online. Uh, programs and mainly run at the weekend anyway. And infuriatingly, I have to sort of say that several students end up with a starting salary higher than our highest paid full professor. Not me, not me, because I'm a dean, so that's okay. But you know, in ter terms of uh, the rest of people um, on this. Um, okay, so ultimately, and I think it would be interesting to get some more feedback um, from the attendees, and I'm looking online here uh, at what's coming in, is what skill sets are companies looking for when they hire a person into entry level cybersecurity? Again, I think we've all spoken to the fact that we have advisory boards, um, and whether the person on the advisory board is definitively a cybersecurity person or not, provided they're senior or not, they're going to give us um, access to the people. But we also rose this question about, um, is there something that we can do as a group rather than individuals to work out a program for internships and spread the word about what we're doing in a better way? Is this something that the, uh, the summit could help us with? Um, Tom, do you have anything that you might want to say in that regard? Well, I, I, the summit already has some degree. I mean, it, and, and it's a great group, and this is a great, you know, the great network opportunity. Um, that something that I brought up, kind of what we talked about before, what I brought up before, is this: the ability to fill. There's a bit of a there's a gap, and um, and. It, it didn't apply so much to, to your students, Tony, it, with with their NSA, and, and they're kind of they're kind of a little bit of a ramp a ramp up for those guys, which is great. Um, but a lot of the students that are trying to get in that that don't have 
that that are that you know they're working they've got whatever background they've got they've taken these classes and um that how do you it's it's the challenge of getting that first gig in that first job and in that field and, and one of the the, the number that, that that always gets thrown around or was always thrown around was the 30 percent of the cybersecurity jobs can't be filled and um cannot be filled and and that there's and from what I've seen, a lot of those are more entry level positions. And I think the challenge is still um, because the field is new and um, the the job descriptions are written by non practicing security professionals are probably written by HR people. And um, and the, the the cybersecurity managers are busy with doing everything they can to, to get pat, to get through whatever they need to get through that one of the. The challenge is, is is getting those people together on the same page, and often I've when I've spoken with different groups of people that I've talked to, to the the managers and I've talked to the hiring me the the, the HR folks and I said y'all need to talk. You need to figure out how to write the job description that matches the job, and or do you need to adjust that job description? Figure out how to offload the responsibilities. That you, you you can't offload all of it. Maybe you can offload twenty percent, or forty percent, or sixty percent, and and work on that. I think that's where the challenge lies. I, I don't really know the answer to that question, but I, I, from what I've seen and continue to see, that's the challenge. Sorry, A um, and M University partnered with Homeland Security, and uh, so through Homeland Security, they they've been able to uh, to put students and jobs through uh, through those connections and through that partnership. And I think if uh, some of these schools have associations with the NSA, Homeland Security, uh, that's where the students can go and get their internships. You just have to work a little harder on it. But I think that's because they're more likely to hire somebody that has a certification from Homeland Security and the NSA uh, yeah. than just uh, someone with a class. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kim? Sorry, thank you, Luan. Tony, I want to make sure I answer your question directly. Can you please restate the question? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, you me. I mean, that's not fair, by the way. What was the question, guys? Can you... <laughs> well, and, and because we're, we're talking about the internship process and we're talking about the skill sets the students are needing uh, for to, to get those jobs and really you know, one, one of the, the big things, and I have to agree with Tom with pretty much everything you said, um, one of the big things that we are always working with with finding partnerships is, again, going back to the fact that companies are very, as the, the whoever stated it, companies are very hesitant to hire students that don't have experience. So um, we are we are literally looking at the all of the feedback that we receive from industry partners, we build based on that field feedback. And when I say build, we build our curriculum based on that feedback. And so when we are looking at the technical aspect, um, we're looking at things like penetration testing, ethical hacking, um, monitoring, risk analysis, uh, disaster recovery. We're looking at those hardcore areas of the technical aspect so that when a student goes through the program, they're in those labs with hands-on, they're in the operations center, they're in a data center, so that they know, they, they fully understand how to apply uh, all of the knowledge they've learned in the program. And so when we go to our industry partners and we present that package, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, hefty package that we're giving to those, those, those organizations to say, Here's what our students can do. Here's what our students uh, have learned. Industry certifications are packaged in with all of our programs. And so as the students are going through the programs, they also have an opportunity to sit for those, uh, those exams and receive industry certifications. Um, all of our faculty are industry certified in various areas. Uh, we have doctors, we have CISSPs, we have a lot of individuals with the skill sets necessary. So we are working with all of these individuals on a consistent basis to actually build in those hardcore technical skills that uh, that businesses and organizations are looking for. With all of that said, uh, I have to continuously go back to the fact of, you know, it's sometimes very challenging to, to make sure that these companies understand the students do have the experience that they're looking for. So it's a, it's a challenge, 
but we are consistently working towards creating the 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 overall well-rounded package that a student would need, that any individual would need actually, to be able to get into cybersecurity. It's such a very specialized field. It's such a very new field. As Tom said, a lot of those job descriptions, job positions, they're written by someone in HR. So you need a translator. Uh, you need someone that's on the IT side, but you need someone with uh, with the managerial side and the and the HR side to be able to be, to, to translate the needs uh, of the company into a, uh, a viable job description. So it's a very difficult thing to do. And uh, just this field in general, um, it is, it's, a, it's a very wide open field, but it is a very difficult, it's a complex field to get into. I mean, it's not just you know networking, it's not just physical security, it's not just locking down your proxy servers. It is a whole lot more than that. And so when we built the program as part of the enterprise networking that we do, we paid attention to those those very unique skill sets that you will not find uh, in a lot of programs. Another thing that we we found working with industries is, you know, sometimes they'll have a cybersecurity person in their organization, but that person doesn't have formal training. They've learned uh, throughout their path with the organization. So there are a lot of things that they kind of miss um, along the way because they don't have that formal education. So those are some of the things that we're working against, some of the challenges we're working with, but also some of the things we're, we're trying to put in place to, to meet those challenges. Right, thanks, thanks very much. I, I, so Stan's the last one for this uh, question. Thank you. And then we'll start to do a bit of a round up and wrap up and see what we can do to take all of us further forward in sure. this domain. So Stan? I'm going to address that uh, question that about uh, skill sets that companies are looking for in an entry level cybersecurity position. Uh, and, and I want to point to another uh, skill set that's probably obvious to everyone, but I didn't hear it today. But I know that uh, the network of industry professionals that I talk to are looking for cybersecurity professionals that can make ethical decisions. They'll point to the human threat uh, and the insider threat, and all of you know about that, and the, the employee that turns malicious for whatever reason. And so they're, they're looking for ways to identify and, and bring into their system ethical decision makers. And so that's a big part of what we're doing in our programs at HBU. It's the environment that we live in in a Christian university uh, and so there are principles and values infused throughout not only the liberal arts curriculum that our students take, but also the technical curriculum and the faculty is very well integrated. And that's a key and explicit part of our approach to uh, preparing cybersecurity professionals. The other point I wanted to make was that uh, the, the question addresses entry level cybersecurity position. And I just want to acknowledge, and it, this will also be obvious to everyone, is that uh, there's not a standard entry-level cybersecurity position. Uh, and a uh, common mistake that my own advisory board makes, so they'll, they'll brag about the cybersecurity program at HBU, and I'll remind them that we're not trying to do all of cybersecurity. We're doing cyber engineering, which is the value part, but only a part of the whole cybersecurity position. So if I were to describe an entry-level cyber engineering position, it would be very different than uh, some other types of entry-level cybersecurity positions. So I just, uh, the, the question is within the context of what do you need? I noticed that, um, for example, just to expand on that a little bit, the, uh, the NICE framework and even the CyberSeq uh, organization, which identifies cybersecurity jobs, has a whole host of uh, job titles that would be considered cybersecurity. And each of those job titles have different specific skill sets. And like I said, there are places, websites that you can go to identify those different skill sets. And so we're not trying to do them all. We're trying to do some of them very well. And probably maybe the rest of you would say something similar, but uh, that was my take on that, that particular question, Tony. Great, thank you. I mean, what I wanna say from, from, from um, University of Houston, College of Technology side. I mean, by the way, where, where, where our focus is is more in to do with um, at master's level, but uh, of course, we're making all these courses available as well at the undergraduate level. 
but we do a lot of research into uh, infrastructure protection. But bottom line is, I think with all of this, is uh, we clearly all have a, a role to play in the Houston community, and we all have a, a role in cybersecurity where all of our students should be um, sought after and employable. Uh, we've spoken at previous summits on this same question, and I'm, I'm prepared to commit uh, University of Houston College of Technology to work with each of you to see what we can do to spread the um, uh, opportunities for uh, employment. So we may, we may well look at, at uh, inviting yours to, um, uh, to our career fair if we felt was, uh, was, was possible. Uh, we'll look into that. But also going back to an earlier point, and I noticed it's all com also coming up on our chat line, uh, asking whether the summit can do uh, something to help with this. I think, yes, there's a big role there to help coordinate that. And if we can work with the summit on this, I think this would be a great thing, both from the point of view of employability, which I've uh, committed to helping out with already, but also helping out with looking at the curricula. We could have people worthwhile having always having people looking at our curriculum again, no matter what, what backgrounds they have. And I think we, could, we can apply that to all of us as well. Does that sound like a reasonable thing uh, to do? Anyone want to make a comment? Yes. Just Sounds great. Helpful. Okay. It does. Okay. Well, that's a quick, short answer. You haven't answered yet, Tom. I, I, I would agree that, that what, what, that there's a there's a lot of a lot of great minds sitting around those tables during those planning sessions. So yeah, figure out maybe a way to, to review specific, get all technical about learning outcomes is figure out maybe divide up some classes and and, and bring a class or something like that and have get volunteers from the summit or people who are attending to um, to look at learning outcomes and make sure that that we're staying up to date. So, I mean, given that uh, a lot of what we're doing already is online because of the COVID sort of thing. So in many respects, uh, I, I can't see many, if any of us, going totally back to what was normal. So we've now produced online courses, which are going to be more readily available and we'll continue doing that. So we ought to be able to be in a position to um, support each other in that regard. And I think that's something that we should undertake to do. I, I, I will commit to uh, getting back in touch with all of you here and anybody else who's listening online who wants to participate to um, get everybody around the table, like we're doing right now, obviously, uh, to talk about this offline in more detail, but more specifically, both about in terms of the curriculum, what we do, what are the different flavors that we each offer. And if the summit can help us um, publicize this better, we could uh, make ourselves available to a wider range of people in industry and commerce, uh, as well as offering uh, internships and uh, and employment afterwards. Sound like a plan? That'd be great. Definitely. I, I, I can see a hint by having your picture coming on the screen. <laughs> I just put myself in there because you're talking about the summit. So, you know, Tony, I hope it's a party. <laughs> but I figured I might as well come in here and talk on behalf of the Cybersecurity Council and the summit. So, uh, we are excited to work with you. We've been excited to work with you. Our whole philosophy has been one of paying it forward into building the next generation. And, uh, you know, as has been evidenced with some of our commitment for the Cybersecurity Excellence and Cybersecurity Awards that we have put in place and we want to kind of grow that program but we want to work with each and every one of our area colleges and uh, schools to help um, and put together a strong curriculum as well as probably internships and externships uh, so, uh, so I, I can't believe I, I made this commitment in public uh, but I will follow through on that and uh, we'll certainly include you in that as well Yumesh. Well, we're happy to be here and to help out and, uh, as you said, to market it. So, yes, absolutely. Okay. Thank you all very much indeed. It's been a pleasure working with you and uh, see what else we can get, get going. And I want to thank everybody for participating. Great, great content. Uh, the area needs what you all are doing. We definitely need not only the area, but the nation and the globe needs uh, from all the needs that there are. And I think we've got to really figure out how we crack. I understand the, exp the experience gap that uh, our HR folks put in place a lot of times, but uh, that, that three-year experience factor normally is a killer. And, I, and, and we understand that. 
And one way to do it is to work through the summit to, to uh, um, you know, people know, people hire people that they know and trust. And so maybe there's a way there. Maybe we should work on that. So with that, I want to thank you, uh, Tony, for all you're doing. Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Kimberly, Tom, Luann. Uh, great panel, great content. Thank you very much. And I'll be in touch with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye, Bye everybody.